the truck one night uh, and went to uh, Lawrence Street, a house on fire. And uh, he and I went in with a with a line to put the fire out. Somebody said there was a lady in there. And, and uh, we knocked the fire down, and after we knocked the fire down, we we backed out because it got dark. There wasn't any light in there. We backed out, and a couple of fellows that uh, went in and and uh, with flashlights and found the, this lady there on the floor, just about three feet or four feet from where we were kneeled down. And. Uh, I could never forget that. Uh, it seems like I was so happy that I didn't bump into her or something like that. And it's, I've seen several other fires that, well, I knew about them. I was a couple of that I didn't get to. One at Myerstown, where there was a man that ran in after a child. He thought everybody was out. And this child started crying, and he ran in after it. Of course, they didn't come back out. That must be very hard to see someone make a decision like that. Well, like I say, I wasn't out that far, but uh, of course, uh, from the information that I got when when they got back, and. Uh, There was another one out in Ransom, Costello family. That uh, there were several in that family that died of two-story home, and they were all in bed. And people said they could see them running around upstairs. And, uh, the light of the fire, they could see them run across the windows. But I, I can't remember now how many how many lost their life there. Do they? Would would they have? Was there, could they have escaped by breaking a window and jumping out? Or, or Well, that's what I never could understand, why they didn't jump out the windows. Mm -hmm. I mean, anything would have been better than staying in there and, and, so and they dying were, because it doesn't take long before you that smoke would get to you. I see. They didn't understand how quickly they yeah. could be overcome. Mm -hmm. You've seen a lot. You go. You remember back? Was it in the fifties when there was that huge explosion on Halltown, the dynamite, yes, uh -huh. or whatever? Can you remember, recall any of that? I mean, you. Yes, I, I, I remember that, but I did, I wasn't on the truck that night. Maybe you heard it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Uh, but uh, uh, in fact, I remember the fellow, the Bill Bates, that uh, died in that. Uh, I remember him in school. He was running to warn other people or yes, something? Yes, 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 he was running to warn other people. And uh, there was a colored gentleman, and I think his name was Thompson, that was standing, oh, I guess it was uh, close to a half a mile away from the explosion that uh, they claimed that it blew him about 10 feet. <laughs> and uh, of course he was all right, but uh, Wow, that, that, that makes quite, you think. That was quite an explosion, yeah. Well, there's a funny thing there that uh, the, there was a train that ran through Halltown fairly regular at that time. And the fire truck was held up by the train. And if the train hadn't held the truck up, the truck would have been sitting right in front of that uh, truck when it blew up. Oh, my goodness. At that time that... Uh, that the train held it up is, was about five minutes, and in five minutes center, the fire truck would have been sitting right there. Oh, and usually, often it usually works the other way, doesn't yes, it? Yes, yes. Because uh -huh. once, you, once you pull into a fire, it takes a little while to, to determine what, uh, what's going on, you know, what you have involved and so forth. And there's been quite, uh, quite a few of those, uh, I remember, uh, uh, service station out in Lee Town that was on fire. The gas pumps was on fire <laughs> and fire was going up a oh, hundred feet in the air. And uh, when you pulled up to something like that, it was 
and there's this gas truck sitting there beside of it. <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> you've got to think real hard before one of those, right? Yes. Isn't that interesting? It's almost, do you run towards it or do you run away from it? <laughs> well, we used foam on it. We were lucky, I guess, that uh, we knocked it down before it got too hot, I guess. But uh, you, I guess God's with you when you yeah. run into those things. Howard, you remind me that how important, I guess when you mention God, it makes you think of leadership, you know, but what I'm saying is this is, these are these real tricky moments when you, you really count on, on good leadership from your, your chief and things. Well, how do you characterize good leadership? You've seen some good ones over the years. What, what, what's a sign of a good chief? I mean, can you, is that possible to say? Well, under, under, what is it? I, I guess uh, you have to depend on uh, what your chief really knows and uh, and how he uses what he knows I mean you can pull into a fire and, and uh, or even before you get to a fire sometimes you can picture what's going on I mean uh, I know we had a barn fire one time and we ran it the second time and uh, I told the driver I was with the driver in the front seat I told him I said well Boy, this is going to be bad because we could see it about a mile away. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but we had knocked it down, and uh, they were going to watch it and take care of it. And uh, but uh, you, you really depend on your chief because he he really does uh, he really does do an important job. And uh, we had uh, I worked under a good chief, Kenny Willingham. I don't know whether anybody's mentioned his name, his brother to uh, Buck Willingham. <laughs> I got Buck in trouble one time. He was, he was, he was coming in new, and uh, he could operate this truck, but he hadn't been cleared. And uh, he and I was, I think, the first two there, and and people were slow. And I said, Buck, can you operate this truck? And he said, Yes. I said, let's go. He said, I haven't been cleared. I said, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so we went to the farm and Kenny got, Kenny got all over him. He didn't get on me, but he, That's funny. he, he took got on Buck side. because he was his brother. <laughs> I think Buck even told us that. That's funny. But he was, he was a gentleman enough not to implicate you. <laughs> well, this is, uh, I, you know, you began as a young firefighter and, and I, I guess with is your experience. I'm thinking what all the experience, the more fires you see, the more next, you know, when you go to a fire, you, you read it differently. You have a different, you know what, you're looking for things. When you first start out, you not don't know what to look for. Is that true? Well. You can interpret a fire, but with some experience or? Yes, you can. Uh, a lot of times, of course, we did this in fire school. Uh, of course, a member had to uh, pass fire school to be a member, and uh, of course we more or less knew where most of these people lived, and we'd say, well, so-and-so's house, and somebody would say, well, there's no stream there, the only thing there is water that we have on the trucks, and of course if, if we could determine before we got there that we were going to need the water truck, that's what we call it, the water truck that had a supply of water on it. We would call the water truck then, and if we didn't need it, why, well, it was okay, but uh, it was better to have the truck there to stand by, so if you needed it. And uh, things like that, and, and we had uh, we had portable pumps that we could carry to the creeks uh, when we couldn't get the trucks down to the creek when we needed water and things of that nature that you, you, you get sort of after so many years, you get used to things like that. And you, but you, you learn all that in far school. Yeah. And, and it becomes second nature. Yes, yes. When I think back of changes, I think of the uh, gasoline fires or kerosene fires, the wood fires, that people had back early in the 50s. 
and most most houses are better equipped to f fight against fires now. You don't have the people. I know there's still some around, but you don't have near as many yeah. people. That, Baseboard heat. Yeah, you you have things like that now instead of wood and coal and uh, chimney fires. Uh, chimneys started a lot of fires. They, old chimneys, they would get a leak in them and, and then somehow the wood that was built around the chimneys would catch on fire. The chimneys would get catch on fire and they'd set that wood on fire from being so hot. And uh, there were several of those that you, that you ran every winter. I, I think those those are probably the biggest things that's helped fire departments because it don't make them near as many runs because of, of those changes. I remember uh, one time, Jim, when we were at a barn fire at it, uh, we called the Tharp Farm. And uh, they had a, a bull that had killed a, a state road worker and they had him pinned up in the bottom part of their barn. <clears throat> and the barn was on fire and uh, another farmer and I, uh, we had gone around to open this door and we had pulled it open and this bull was standing there. Of course, we didn't know he was in there. And uh, Mr. Tharp, uh, Bill Tharp, uh, ran up and said, my God, don't open that door. He said, that bull's in there. <laughs> Of course, we all knew that it was the bull that had killed this man. So we closed it back up real quick. So you were eye to eye with the bull for just a few seconds, right? Yes. That's enough. Yes. <laughs> uh, fires, fires, I, <clears throat> I really don't understand why the uh, department over on the mountain, Blue Ridge,